Hey, Abbott, what time is it? It's time for the Abbott and Costello Show. We're on the air for ABC here in Hollywood. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go with the Abbott and Costello Show. It's the Abbott and Costello Show, produced and transcribed in Hollywood tonight for your listening pleasure with Susan Miller and the music of Matty Malley. Hold on to your chairs, folks, for here they are, Bud Abbott and Luke Costello. Hey, Costello, Costello, what's the matter? She had something terrible happen. My Aunt May got all mixed up. She gave her dog her medicine and took the dog's medicine by mistake. That's awful. What effect did it have? Now the dog sits on Uncle Mike's lap and Aunt May is out chasing rabbits. <laughs> well, never mind your Aunt May. How did you like that date I fixed up for you last night? Wasn't she a lovely girl? Oh, lovely girl. Brother, was that Dame Knockneed? Oh, she wasn't so knockneed. No. When we were walking down Hollywood Boulevard, one knee said to the other, I let you pass first the last time. Now give me a chance. <laughs> Well, did you have a good time? Well, first I took her to Sarah's for dinner. That cost $31. Then I bought her a box of chocolates. That cost $4. Then I took her to the movies. That cost $2. Then I took her home and she slammed the door right in my face. She didn't? That's gratitude for you. After all the money she spent on me. <laughs> Costello, running around every night with a different girl is no good. Someday, you're going to get in trouble. Not me, Abbott. When it comes to women, I'm smart. No woman has pinned anything on me since I was a baby. <laughs> Costello, how can you be so stupid? Why don't you be more like me? Like you? Then who would tell the jokes? I, I mean, you should me use me for a model. I'm a model man. A model man? That's what started the last fight between my Aunt May and Uncle Mike. He got mad because Aunt May called him a model man. Well, why did your Uncle Mike get mad? He looked it up in a dictionary and found out that a model is a small imitation of the real thing. <laughs> what happened then? They really had a fight. They fought tooth and nail. Tooth and nail? Yes, Aunt May nailed Uncle Mike in a puss and knocked out his tooth. <laughs> Today. What's your excuse this time, Lou? Well, I couldn't happen, Abbott. When I got to Hollywood and Vine, the traffic was all snarled up. Was there an accident? No, some tourist stopped for a red light. I, <laughs> I see you got another traffic ticket, eh? Yep. Ah, uh, Costello, that's six traffic tickets you've got this week alone. Uh, how do you count for that? Well, Sunday I couldn't get the car out of the garage. <laughs> well, what is the ticket for this time? Double park in my car? And it's a $200 fine? It can't be. It's only $2 fine. Lots of people double park their cars. On top of other cars? I... <laughs> you went to your car in the midget race. Well, that wouldn't be fair. Why not? How would it look, a big guy like me racing against those little midgets? <laughs> you know, your brother Pat borrowed my car Saturday. Uh, uh, there, uh, there's a, really a fast car. Yeah, Pat, let me drive your car. I turned off the road and cut right through the farm. I was driving so fast that I went past the beans and going to look like succotash. How fast were you going? 80 miles a minute. You mean 80 miles an hour? I mean minute. That car of yours won't go an hour. <laughs> You idiot, you had no right to drive my car through a farm. I had to have it. If I drive, drive it down the road, I'd pass a junkyard, and every time I do that, the car would stop. Why? It gets homesick. <laughs> now, look, that car is in great shape, Costello. If you drove that car into a race, you'd go, uh, you'd, you'd go like thunder across the finish line. Thunder is right. Every time I stop the motor, the windows fall out of the house across the street. No. <laughs> that's ridiculous. That car's in fine shape. Why, well, I haven't paid a dime on that car for repairs in ten months. Yeah, that's what the repairman told me. <laughs> he said you were a deadbeat. <laughs> hey, 
Keep your first remarks to yourself. And tell your brother Pat that he ruined my car. When he brought it back, the engine was smoking. Well, it's old enough to smoke. <laughs> what do you want it to do, chew tobacco? Never mind that. I had some new tire covers in that car, and they're gone now. Those tire covers were no good, Abbott. I put them on the tires, they didn't last ten miles. Costello, <laughs> you are an imbecile. Oh, Boulder! Now you made me say a bad word. What? What are you talking about? Boulder's a dam. Isn't that a bad word? I... <laughs> Enough of this nonsense. See that my car's brought back to my house tonight. Oh, I don't think I can bring it back tonight, Abbott. This afternoon, I took it out for a ride, and a big truck tried to beat me to the intersection. Uh, what? Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't tell me you ran my car into that truck. Mm-hmm. No. Well, thank goodness for that. The truck ran into me. I... <laughs> Ask you the owner of that truck. Who owns it? What, is a, what does the truck look like? Well, it was a big, bright red truck with a lot of brass on it. There was a long ladder on it, and there were six fishermen in it. <laughs> Fishermen? Six guys with rubber coats and hats. Brother, were they zooming along? You idiot, that was a fire truck, and they were a fireman going to a fire. From now on, you stay away from my car and stay away from my house. You ain't got any house. That's where the fire was. <laughs> this is terrible. You wrecked my car, then my house burns down. Oh, it's a lucky thing I still have some money in the bank. You ain't got any money in the bank either. What? While everybody was watching a fire at your house, the bank was robbed. Right. <laughs> well, there goes everything but my wife's car. I've got to tell you, Abbott, the guy that robbed the bank took your wife's car to make their getaway. <laughs> well, this is awful. My car's wrecked. My my house is burned down. My money is my money's been stolen. The only thing I have left in the world is my darling little wife. That's the part I forgot to tell you about. <laughs> The guys that robbed the bank kidnapped your wife, and if you want her back, you'll have to pay them $20,000 ransom. Yep. Hey, which one of you guys is butt out of? I am. Well, I'm the guy that kidnapped your wife. Now, look, mister, I haven't got $20,000. You want your wife back, don't you? Oh, yes, I do, but I haven't got $20,000. Well, you have now. What do you mean? Listen, me and my partners talked it over, and we're willing to pay you 20000 bucks to take her off our hands. <laughs> don't. Do it, Abbott. What do you mean? Abbott, do you realize how bad these guys are stuck? They got your wife. They'll pay more than $20,000 to get rid of that old turkey. <laughs> now, uh, let me handle this. <clears throat> Look, mister, Abbott is willing to take his wife back, but uh, it's going to cost you $30,000. Uh, you drive a hard bargain, fatso. Well, here's the 30000 Hey, Charlie, bring her in. Buddy, my, I just had the most exciting experience. These two charming boys have been driving me around all over town. Ah, uh, come on, Charlie, before this jerk changes his mind. You're a sucker, Rabbit. We could have got 40000 <laughs> Quiet, Costello. Uh, Betty, darling, do you realize who those two men were? Mm. They were bandits. They were bad men. Oh, I thought they were pretty good. <laughs> oh, the little one kissed me. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Abbott, how could a little short guy like that kiss a big, tall woman like you? I boosted him up on a chair. Uh, oh, so what if I say? How dare you? Costello, how can you suggest that my wife would stoop to kiss a bandit? She didn't stoop, Abbott. She boosted him up on a chair. Oh, oh you insignificant imbecile. I'll... Mrs. Abbott, Mrs. Abbott, when you call me that, smile. Why? I'd like to hear the wind whistle through your teeth. <laughs> Hello, I have beautiful teeth. Yes, one upper and one lower. <laughs> they ought to get together someday for lunch. Now cut that out, Costello. My wife has had a very tough day. Our house burned down and she was kidnapped, kidnapped by bandits and you're picking on her. Why? Why? Why do you continually insult my wife? Now, oh, I'm a bad boy. I'll say you are a bad boy and it's all because you wasted your time in school. I didn't waste my time in school, Abbott. We were so poor, we went to school without any shoes. And the kid that sat next to me, his father was a millionaire. I worked hard, and he didn't. I graduated, and he failed and was expelled. I never saw him again until last week. Do you know what he is today? A bum, huh? No, a millionaire. His father died and left him all that money. <laughs> Costello, I don't know what the future holds for you. Oh, maybe I can help him, bud. Here, Costello, let me see your hand. I'll tell your fortune. 
Okay. My, my, my. What an interesting hand. Oh, this line tells me that you have six children. I ain't even married. You'd better get that line fixed. <laughs> oh, now let's see. Oh, yes, this is your lifeline. Oh, my. You'll live to be 28 years old. But I'm 33 now. Oh, how do you like that, bud? He's been dead for five years and doesn't even know it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you certainly you mopped the place up with him that time. You know how to handle him, dear. Oh, you always mop up with him. You're the one that knows how to handle him. But I insist you mopped up with him today. You know how to handle him. Ladies and gentlemen, you have just heard from a couple of old mop handles. <laughs> oh, goodbye. <laughs> My wife is a wonderful girl, Costello. She's the picture of hell. Did you notice her rosy red cheeks? Red cheeks are the sign of good health? Certainly. Well, tonight she was healthier on one side than she was on the other. <laughs> uh, pardon me, gentlemen. Uh, which one of you is Costello? I am Lou Costello. The boys of the Legion have been listening to your program, Costello... And we have decided to make you a member of the Legion. Costello, do you realize what an honor this is? Ah, then you accept. You will join the Legion. Oh, sure. I'll be very, very happy to join the Legion. Good. Be at this address in an hour, and we will make you members. Goodbye. Habit. You ought to be proud of me. Think of it. I'm going to be a member of the Legion. Someday I may be head of the Legion. I may even get to be a big politician. I can see myself now at the meeting at the Big Four. Me, Lana Turner, Hedy Lamar, and Betty Grable. Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. What about Atlee, De Gaulle, and Stalin? Let them get their own girls. <laughs> well, let's get over the Legion Network. We'll return after these messages on Radio Theater. Stay tuned. In our next hour, I'll have the conclusion to the Abbott and Costello show, plus Beyond Tomorrow, right here on KRLD. Welcome back to the KRLD Radio Theater. I'm your host, Bob Gibson. Time now for the conclusion to the Abbott and Costello Show. I may be wrong, but I think it's time for our singing star, Susan Miller, to sing the lyrics to I May Be Wrong. I may be wrong, but I think you're wonderful. I may be wrong, but I think you're swell. I like your style, say, I think it's marvelous. I'm always wrong, so how can I tell? All of my clothes are unsightly. All of my hats are a crime. If here in you I've picked rightly, it's the very first time. You're wonderful. I think you're grand, but I may be wrong. Two suits to me are all aces. Life to me just isn't mellow. Faces are all open spaces. You might be Lou Costello. You came along, say. I think you're wonderful. I think you're grand. But I may be wrong. Well, Costello, there's the Legion headquarters officer of the captain. Let's go in. Costello, there's a great honor for you. Yes, it reminds you of the time I went to Harvard. I was in the medical school. 
You went to Harvard Medical School? Yes. What were you studying? Nothing. They were studying me. <laughs> Talk sense. Let's go into the Legion office. Ah, ha, ha. I see you have kept your word. You have come to join the Legion. Costello, I will now swear you in. Place your left hand over your heart and repeat after me. After me. So. <laughs> Costello, the man wants you to repeat after him. I beg your pardon. After him. <laughs> no, no, no. Not after him. I want you to repeat after me. Okay. After me. <laughs> yeah, tell me when he says he wants you to repeat after me, he means he wants you to repeat after him. Make up your mind. Do I repeat after you or after him? After him. After me. Why don't you two guys go out in the alley and fight it out? <laughs> Never mind that. We'll dispense with the formalities. Abbott and Costello... Do you wish to join the Legion? We, we do. do. Good. You are now members of the Legion. Our boat leaves for Morocco tonight. <laughs> I didn't know the American Legion was having a convention in Morocco. What American Legion? You just joined the Foreign Legion. Get going! <laughs> Done it, Costello. Join the Foreign Legion. Here we are in this this rat infested ship. Look at that cutthroat crew. Look at the captain. He's standing on the bridge. Well, the captain is supposed to stand on the bridge while it's still in the sailor's mouth. I... <laughs> the worst thing on this ship is the food. Yes, it's pretty bad food, Abbott. Yes, sir. Today I threw my lunch overboard, and the fish threw it back. <laughs> Well, I hope the food will be better when we reach Foreign Legion headquarters. I heard the food they eat there will make you as tough as nails. What do they eat? Nails. <laughs> and the cheap kind. Penny nails. Here comes the captain. Hey, you two! I told you not to come up on deck. If you disobey my orders again, I'll cut your ears off. I'll hang you from the main mast by your toes and stick this pool cue in your ear and play billiards with your eyeballs. And if that don't work, I'll torture you. Yeah, well, I can lick you with both hands tied to the rail. Well, why don't you do it? Um, all right, let me tie your hands to the rail. <laughs> Costello, are you afraid of this guy? Nah. Then go ahead and fight him. Suppose he does kill you. What's well, better than dying like a hero? Living like a coward. <laughs> you know, you are lucky you didn't start anything with me, Costello. Why, I jam my fist in your mouth, jar your teeth loose, and beat you to a jelly. Hmm, hmm, jam, jar, jelly. Heaven preserve us. <laughs> I'll be keeping my eye on you. <laughs> what was that? <clears throat> the ship must be going around the horn. <laughs> Look, we're coming into shore. On our ship. <laughs> Come on, Costello. Come on, Costello. Nobody's watching us. Let's jump overboard and swim for shore. Quick, you jump first. Here I go. <laughs> Costello, you, you just jumped into the water. How'd you get back on deck here again? Abbott, did you ever back into a swordfish? Oh, come on. Well, Costello, no one saw us get off that ship. Now, we can only sneak across the desert. We may escape from the Foreign Legion. Abbott, I know the best way to escape. We'll take a boat and go up the Nylon River. Oh, you... <laughs> Now, you mean we'll go up the Nile River. Nylon is something that goes on a girl's leg. Well, you go your way and I'll go mine. (laughs) 
crossing the desert is dangerous, Lou. <laughs> the heat may affect your mind. You may even see a mirage. I used to go steady with a mirage. <laughs> yeah, dummy, a mirage is something that you, you can see, but you can't get your hands on. That's her. <laughs> She, 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 she was crazy about me. She's she, crazy without you. <laughs> she loved me. She come from a city in Turkey. I can't remember the name. Istanbul? No, Abbott, it's the truth. No, no, I said Istanbul. And I said it's no bullets, the truth. <laughs> she was probably Turkish. Did she have an accent? No, but she talked through her nose, and she had a cold. Boy, could she keep up a running conversation. <laughs> Where did you meet this girl? She was a dancer in a nightclub. She did the dance of the seven veils. Monday night, she would take off the first veil. Tuesday, she'd take off the second veil. Wednesday, the third veil, and Thursday, the fourth veil. Did the place do any business? Sunday night, you couldn't get into the joint. <laughs> People couldn't wait till she took off that seventh veil to see the beautiful mink coat she wore under it. All oh, talk sense. Costello, there's no one around. Now, we've got to buy a camel and cross the desert. I'll ask this guy where we can buy a camel. Pardon me, sir. Could you tell us where we can buy a camel? Don't bother me, bud. I just escaped from the foreign legion. I went home. My wife ran away with my best friend. They took all my money and burned my house down. If that happened to me, I, I would have cut my throat. Why do you think I'm whispering? <laughs> <laughs> Abbott, there's a place we're looking for. See that sign? Honest Hassan, used camel dealer. Come on. 900,665, 900,666, 900,667. Abbott, he's counting his money. 900,668, 900,666. Uh, uh, Mr. Hassan? Huh? Mr. What, what is it? What? Oh, you made me lose count. I got to start over. One, two, three, four. Well, count that money later. We want to buy a camel. Oh, customers. Oh, well, there's a bunch of dandy camels over there. Do you mind if I carry a couple of them? Uh, what do you want to carry a camel? Why not? Camels carried us for five years. <laughs> All right, boys. What kind of a camel do you want, huh? Would you like uh, one hump or two? One hump with lemon, please. <laughs> Mr. Hassan, what is that camel over there? The one with the uh, six humps. Oh, that's our station wagon model. <laughs> well, we'll take him. We've got to get across the desert. Oh, if you're going across the desert, you'll need a guide. Oh, guide. The shifting sands blot out the trails. My guide, Abdul, he's the greatest on the desert. Abdul can find a trail buried under tons of sand. Abdul can find his way through anything. Good. We'll hire Abdul now. Sorry, you can't have Abdul now. Why? He's lost. <laughs> Come on, Castello. We've got to get out of here. We'll cross the desert alone. Abbott, we've been on this desert for five days. I can't stand it any longer. It's so hot. You go on without me. I'm only holding you back. My life is worthless anyway. We both can't make it. You have more to live for than I. Abbott, my beloved friend, go on without me. I'll stay here and die. No, no, don't say it, Abbott. Don't say it. I, I'm going to stay here and die. Nothing you can say will make me change my mind. But, uh, all right, you talk me into it. I'll go with you. <laughs> What are you doing out here in the middle of the desert selling the Los Angeles papers? Boy, did they give me a lousy corner. <laughs> Costello, we only had some towels to put over our heads to protect us from the heat. Hey, look, there are three beautiful girls coming toward us. One is wearing a towel for a scarf. Grab it. Okay, I got it. The other one is wearing a towel for a turban. Okay, I got it. The other one is wearing... Okay, I got it. Ah! What's that? She was wearing a towel for a towel. <laughs> Costello, this girl is beautiful. Look, she's wearing a veil over her face. Gee, you're pretty. Why are you wearing that veil over your face? It's the customs of the country. Anything <clears throat> else you'd like to know? Uh, how do I get through the customs? <laughs> Uh, 
Costello. Costello, we did it. We've crossed the desert. Look, there's a boat. We're going back to America. We've escaped from the Foreign Legion. Come on. Well, Costello, we've been at sea for three days now. I wonder when we get home. I'll ask the captain. Hey, Captain, when does this boat get to America? This boat is not going to America. We are taking prisoners to the Foreign Legion. That did it, Abbott. I'm diving overboard. (laughs) Costello, you just jumped into the water. How'd you get back on deck? Did you ever back into a swordfish? You did that joke before. So what? I like the joke. I'll do it again. Did you ever... Come on! Come on! 